Okay, welcome everybody to a class on war and peace vocabulary. You have a lot of this in the newspapers. It's very useful vocabulary. So let's start with, let's start at the beginning. Bitter enemies. This is where it all starts, isn't it? Any kind of war starts with two or more bitter enemies. So bitter is used as an adjective here to make it clear that the two enemies really hate each other. They are bitter. And this bitter, it's actually a form of taste. Yeah, you have salt, sweet, bitter, sour. Yeah, the four forms of taste. Um, but when you talk about somebody feeling bitter, it means they're really resentful, really angry about something. And if you are bitter enemies, you are angry enemies. You hate each other with a passion. OK, if you engage in hostilities, you start fighting. As simple as that. You know, um, when two countries engage in hostilities, some kind of conflict erupts. Yeah. And please remember, we use the word erupt for volcanoes. And we also use the word erupt for conflict has erupted, fighting has erupted, violence has erupted. Yeah. And I want you to make uh, to, to memorise break out as well, which is like an eruption. An eruption is a breakout and fire can break out. A pandemic can break out. Disease can break out. Fighting can break out. Conflict can break out and violence can break out. OK, um, but yeah, when you in engage in hostilities, you start fighting. That's all that means. Start fighting, engage in hostilities. And if you stockpile weapons, you are buying more and more and more and more weapons in order that they build up. Yeah, the number of weapons you have builds up so that you are well defended. And so the country might be stockpiling heavy artillery. This is a type of weapon. Your artillery is it's like your cannons, guys. We used to call these things cannons, but uh, I think nowadays, I think some of the guns are still called cannons. They have very long um, tubes where the shells, the artillery shells are put. Yeah, artillery shells are like very large bullets. That's how I think of them anyway. An artillery shell. Yeah. And so your artillery, it's the big guns, guys. It's the big guns where you fire at your opponent from quite some distance but using your artill artillery. And of course, these artillery, these big guns have been around for at least 150 years. We've had art heavy artillery. And I think that they gr it grew out of cannons. You know, in the old, old days, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, we just called these heavy artillery cannons. So it's a cannon that fires cannonballs. It's cannons that you have on ships. But heavy artillery nowadays, and so heavy artillery fires artillery shells. And so the enemy might be stockpiling heavy artillery. And remember, stock up on means stockpile. It's a good phrasal verb that means stockpile. So they're stocking up on heavy artillery. OK, now, if you want to put your troops somewhere, you can use this word deploy. Deploy troops on the border. Yeah, maybe you have a, um, a next door neighbour. Maybe the country, maybe you have a neighbouring country, which is a bit of enemy in which case you might choose to deploy troops on the border. OK, now remember, we use all these words with these verbs. Violence has escalated. The conflict has escalated. Fighting has escalated. Violence has erupted. Fighting has erupted. Fighting has broken out. The conflict has spilled over the border. The conflict has spilled over into neighbouring countries. Yeah, so there's a few. Remember this spillover. If ever you want to say that the conflict has moved from one place to another, then especially if it's the next place, the neighbouring place, we very often use this word. Conflict has spilled over into neighbouring countries. And notice the over into. Um, but if you just mean over the border, you don't need an into. Has spilled over the border, but spilled over into neighbouring countries. Now, if something is an unprovoked attack, this means that the attack came without any provocation. So it was totally unnecessary, totally uncalled for. We often say that for unprovoked. This was totally uncalled for. It means it really wasn't necessary. It's a bad thing to do. That kind of attack was uncalled for. It was no, nobody asked to be attacked. So it was an unprovoked attack. Now, if civilians, it's usually civilians, sadly, are caught in the crossfire, 
This means that two armies or two militaries are fighting each other, they're shooting at each other, but sadly sometimes civilians step out into the middle of the war zone. Yeah, they step out into the, the dangerous area where the, where the um, war is taking place, where the battle is taking place, and they are caught in the crossfire. Yeah, and sadly that means that some civilians will be killed, and we would call that either slaughtered civilians or collateral damage, usually depending on whether your side did it or the opponents, yeah? I'm just trying to point out that if your side kills some civilians, that's always called collateral damage, because this is a euphemism. Whereas if the opponents kill ordinary civilians, if your bitter enemies kill ordinary civilians, then we'd say they slaughtered the civilians. And of course, in the language of war and peace, there is an incredible volume of propaganda. In fact, everything that either side says at least has some element of propaganda in there. And so certainly this word will be used if you don't if you don't blame your own troops for doing it. If, you, if it's your troops that did it, you'll call it collateral damage just because it sounds more positive. I mean, it doesn't sound positive. It's bad, of course, but it's a euphemism. It's a nicer way of saying our team slaughtered the local civilians. OK, now refugees are people running from conflict. OK, refugees are people running from conflict. Um, they might be running from from something else, actually. It might be that uh, maybe they've been kicked out of their own country. Maybe they've been threatened in their own country. It might not be conflict. It might be some other reason. But if something has caused them to run to another country, then we would call these people refugees. And of course, we have a lot of refugees around the world at the moment. We have in the UK. We have a lot of refugees that are by that that arrive by inflatable boat, having gone through half of Europe first which as far as I'm aware is not in a state of war, it's in a state of peace. And so, um, yeah, refugees will come from a very long distance to, uh, and, and, and they will uh, certainly, they're doing something very dangerous coming across that sea on those inflatable boats. Sometimes women and children, they die sadly in this, in this uh, very sad state of affairs. So I think that they should actually stop people doing that. Um, it's really bad for everybody involved. Now, if you go on the offensive, if your army goes on the offensive, they start attacking. Yeah, there's two forms. There's two things that the soldiers can be doing. They could be defending or they could be attacking. And to go on the offensive means to go on the attack. And you can say that our army have gone on the attack. Yeah, certainly to go on the offensive, to go on the attack. And there may have been a spate of attacks or.